Welcome back. Four years ago, Donald Trump lost Miami-Dade County to Hillary Clinton by 30 points. This year, he only lost the county by seven points. That 23-point swing came with a lot of hard work by the president, who courted the county's Hispanic voters, Cuban Americans, Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, Colombians. He repeatedly came down here and met with them, holding roundtable discussions. He offered a message of economic opportunity and talked tough about standing up to Castro Maduro. But the key to his message was fear, stoking the belief that Democrats wanted to turn America into a socialist country. In other words, Biden and the Democrats like Donna Shalala and Debbie Mercus O'Powell wanted to turn this country into the very thing many of them had fled. Democrats never came up with a way to counter those false attacks. At first, they ignored them. But by the time they realized the tactic was working, it was too late. After the election, I spoke to Freddie Balsera, who was a senior advisor on the Obama campaign and was in charge of Hispanic media for Obama. Let's listen. They invested in Hispanic voters way early in this race. He had these round tables, several of them here in Miami-Dade County. He was coming in constantly. So his folks, his supporters were fired up. We saw it the night of the rally at Opelok Airport where they say thousands of people were there. We saw them in these caravans all over town. And that energy and intensity uh, manifested itself in these results. So what do you think was the motivating factor for them though? What was the message? What was different in 2020 than 2016 when they did not rally around Donald Trump? Sadly, I think that uh, a lot of voters, especially Hispanic voters, uh, a lot of them like strong men. They like Galileos. So what turns a lot of Americans off in other parts of the country was, I think, what appealed to this segment of the electorate. Uh, they, they like his approach. They like his defiance. And they, I guess they identified with that. So I think that was one of the major factors. And then another factor was this socialism factor, this narrative that was created that all Democrats are socialists, uh, you saw uh, signs everywhere. You saw it in the rallies. You saw it in social media. If you were a Democrat in Miami-Dade County, according to these people, you were a socialist, period. This absurd narrative of calling Democrats communists uh, recklessly in all these elections is, has been around for a long time. Uh, our famous and beloved Representative Claude Pepper was actually a senator before he was a congressman and lost a seat, and they called him Red Pepper, of all people to call Claude Pepper a communist. I've been called a communist. And, and this has been something that they have used in the past. I think they used it a little bit more effectively right now. Um, you asked about the Obama campaign. Obama was called a communist. And we even had that incident in Texas where one of our volunteers comes out on TV with a Che Guevara poster behind her. But the difference there was that we didn't take anything for granted and we attacked that narrative head on and we dispelled it to the point that Barack Obama won the Cuban vote, won Miami-Dade County by a large margin and won the state of Florida twice. I think in this case, the Democrats were very slow in confronting this head on and saying how false it is and attacking Republicans for trying to confuse the voters and manipulate the voters and also take advantage of the pain that a lot of these voters have that is so sensitive that when you call somebody a socialist or a communist, it makes their ears perk up. Do you think it is exploitive? Do you think the Republicans are knowingly exploiting the pain of folks who come from repressive authoritarian regimes and using that as a way of whipping them up without any basis in fact? It is beyond exploitive. It is disgusting. Because when, when you look at the record, when you look at the fact that Donald Trump was trying to do business in Cuba, he was trying to take over the management of the National Hotel in Havana. He was trying to take the Miss Universe pageant to Havana and was trying to build a development like Casa de Campo in Dominican Republic with a private airstrip, with a beach, with luxury homes and a golf course outside of Havana. That's the record. The record speaks for itself. These are facts. And to have someone like that then try to use this socialism or communist card. When you see 
that in Venezuela, absolutely nothing has happened except that they've given people false hope that there may be someday a U.S. invasion, and they dangle that carrot in front of them uh, to try to get their support. You know, this, this is beyond uh, exploitive. It is disgusting. But they do it so convincingly that when you say a lie enough times, it becomes the truth in the eyes of many people. And I think that's what happened here. And then on the flip side, um, Democrats were just way too slow in confronting it. I had one elected official, former elected official, tell me that, you know, just simply coming out and, and saying, I'm not a socialist, is tantamount to sort of stepping forward and saying, I don't beat my wife. When you have to say it out loud that way, Correct. you know, it, it, still, it still sticks to you. And, and I think that a lot of these Republicans you know, privately always knew and admitted that Biden was not a socialist, but they saw that it was sticking. I mean, to call Donna Shalala a socialist is among the most absurd things that anybody could possibly say. And then the funny part, one of the things that really shocks me about the hypocrisy uh, in, in this whole situation is that you have people saying these things in our community, but many of them are on Obamacare. Many of them are the ones that travel to Cuba on a regular basis. Many of them are the ones that have family members in Cuba, yet they're applauding new policies that only squeeze the Cuban people and make it even more difficult for you to support your family and send them money, send them food and basic su supplies that they need. So it just, it baffles me that you have these people that are singing the, the, the socialist communist chant, but then on the flip side, they're in a district like uh, Shalala's district, which has the highest enrollment of Obamacare in the country. I mean, the, the, the contradictions are just all over the place. What message has to change um, from the Democratic side of things to ever potentially win? Or is Florida just a red state now? And we should just accept that Florida is a red state. No, I don't accept it. And I don't think that we necessarily have to be in a state of despair. Uh, on the other hand, I think that we have to wake up and we need to realize that we need to take bold action as Democrats if we want to win. When you look at the Hispanic messaging by the party, it's always about immigration and about social services, which is good, which is important. But they're, they're failing to recognize that Hispanics are aspirational and they want to hear about the economy, jobs, prosperity. These are people that want to own their own business. Once they own it, they want to have a prosperous business. They want to own a home. They want to have money in their pocket, take a vacation, uh, buy a, a decent car, send their kids to college. And the, the Republicans, to their credit, were much better at hitting that message than the Democrats that do always have this doom and gloom message for Hispanics that they're going to take away your benefits, they're gonna take away your health care, and they're gonna deport you, even though if you're voting, you're, you're a US citizen already. Uh, the Republicans are much sharper in talking to the aspirations of these people versus trying to scare them into voting for, for, for our party. Later in the show, we will get the Republican take from State Representative Daniel, per uh, Daniel Perez, who is in line to become Speaker of the Florida House. But first, we talk to Danielle Levine Cava, who won the race for Dade County Mayor. Stay with us.